everybody. Welcome to the Ladybug Laboratory podcast. I will be your host for today. Um, my name is Lily and this is a craft cast. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry. All of that info will be in the down bar. We also have a Ravelry group, uh, the Ladybug Laboratory podcast group, and that's where you will find any show notes, um, various other things. There's also a thread there. And this is a little bit of a different podcast than you might be used to. The way that this show works is I have one segment on a topic, any sort of topic. And the second part will be a few projects that sort of sort of showcase that topic. So um, today's topic is socks. And if you have any suggestions for future topics, you can go to the Ravelry group or post them in the down bar. To be perfectly honest with you, if you post them in the comments, I probably will not remember them. You have to, if you put them in the Ravelry group, I'll remember. Um, yeah, and we also have, let's see. I think that's about all I have to mention. Well, welcome. Thank you for stopping by and let's move on. All right, everybody, I changed the camera angle a little bit, so hopefully that will work better. So today's topic is socks and excuse me while I look and grab over here. This is my desk and I have absolutely covered it in all sorts of examples. So let's talk about socks. Basically, here's how socks work. You make a tube. Okay, this is a very old pair of socks, so bear with me, okay? This is like two or three years old. So this is a tube, okay? The tube will go on your foot and there are three parts of the sock that are not just a generic tube. The first one is the cuff. And in this case, I've given it ribbing. We'll talk about different types of cuffs later. But the idea of the cuff is you want something to stick the sock to the top of your foot. Then, of course, there's the toe. And people's toes don't generally just sort of end. They come to a point somehow. So the toe, there's lots of different ways of doing it, but the toe is how you taper that sock. And of course, the third one is the heel. So I'm going to talk about this for a minute. If I were to take this sock, this is a sock blocker. It is vaguely foot shaped. I'm going to take this sock and I'm going to put it on the sock blocker as if it were just a tube. Now, if any of you have ever tried to wear actual tube socks, you know what I'm about to show you, which is that it does not fit. Okay. You see that the stitches are very stretched out along the heel and they're kind of all bunched up right there. You're going to get a lot of sort of pulling at the back of your ankle because it's going to try and pull into the, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So what you do is you add a heel. I have the other sock here to show you. So the idea of a heel is basically whatever you're doing, you're doing somehow creating a fabric so that your sock tube will come up and then turn and then the tube keeps going. Heels are the most complicated part about socks. Um, and there are different types of heels that you can do that do different things. Um, I'm just going to give a very quick overview of different types of cuffs, heels, and toes. So, first off, let's talk about the cuff. Often, cuffs are ribbing, okay, because ribbing is really good at making things shrink in and stick to your cuff. Um, this one is a two by two ribbing. This one is a one by one ribbing. As you can see, it's one pearl, one knit. This one is for the most part, a one by one twisted stitch ribbing. You can see that the knit stitches are twisted. There's also some unique ribbings. So let's start with this one actually. This one has a little bit of extra space there. So you can see it's one by one all the way up here and then there's two pearl stitches and I'm just gonna twist it so you can see. And then here there's two knit, twisted knit stitches. So that's a little bit more of a decorative, unique ribbing. We've also got this one. Whoa, 
That is really blowing out. Oh man. You're not going to be able there we go. So this is three purl, two knit, one purl, two knit, and then you repeat. So it's three, two, one, two, all the way around. So that's again a little bit of a more unique ribbing for each sort of pattern. Here's another unique ribbing, and this one has different numbers of ribbing, but it also has one of them is just a cable. And you see the cable just goes all the way down through. It doesn't have to be ribbing all the way, right? You can, I'm gonna twist it so you can see the front. That's what the front looks like. So you can have cables up into ribbing. It still serves the purpose of sort of being elastic so that the um, cuff will stay on. But you can also have cuffs that aren't ribbing. Usually they are decorative. Um, often there will be a way for them to stay up even though they're not ribbing. And at this point I'm going to show you a couple of more decorative not ribbing cuffs. Okay, so this one is a decorative cuff where it's not ribbing. There's just beads here. This is actually a really cool pattern. It doesn't have a lot of elasticity. So you just kind of have to trust it to stay up by virtue of being the right size. And this one, I could not get to go on the sock blocker, so I'm just gonna show it to you. This is an ankle sock, so it's, or excuse me, a knee-high sock, so it's a lot taller, which is why I can't get it on the sock blocker. Um, but you can see, instead of having a uh, ribbing, it goes from this stockinette to this cable with this stitch that really pulls in. And that's how it gets it to stay up, okay? Now you can see the bind off is very decorative itself. It actually is kind of similar to the other one, but it sort of flares out. And you might think, oh, that looks kind of weird. Well, actually it doesn't end up flaring up that much because when you stretch this and put this on your leg, it looks more like that. So those are some decorative cuffs. Uh, most cuffs will be ribbing of some sort. And then you go from your ribbing down into your tube. And in this case, the tube is patterned, but on a very basic sock, it's just knit. The tube part can be any pattern you want, and that can be from absolutely nothing, just stockinette knit stitches, to incredibly complex lace or beadwork or whatever. So. Um, I'm just going to show you guys a couple of sample patterns. This is some basic patterning that you can do with just purl and knit stitches. This one is a little bit simpler lace patterning. This one, of course, is just stockinette. There's no pattern to that at all. This one has got some cable details, ribbing details, and some beading details. I'll rotate it so you can see what the center looks like. So this one's obviously a lot more complicated. And this one has some slip stitches and um, double stitches. So um, that's how the tube works. You just sort of add a pattern. The next part is heels, and I'm actually gonna start in another segment um, because heels are complicated and if you didn't know I record on my phone and the way that I do it is uh, my phone will not upload to the internet large segments and that even means uploading to my computer so I can edit so I have to record in smaller segments um, so that I can get it done faster so I'm gonna start a new segment where we talk about heels Okay, so a heel is how you turn your tube. And there are three basic heel types that I'm gonna go over today. There are a lot more of more nuanced types, especially within each one. But there's three basic types I'm gonna talk about today. So the first one is the short row heel. So in these socks, I came down, all right, and I got about here. This one I did a little bit more of a complicated short row heel, but bear with me. You get about here and you start doing short rows. If you're not familiar with short rows, you literally do rows that are shorter than your normal rows. So you go back and forth, 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 sort of building down to here. 
and then you go back out again. You go back and forth, 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 until you're all the way at your normal stitch count. So you've sort of created this heel turn shape um, out of having extra stitches here from doing shorter rows. And you can see it's almost like this seam. Okay, that's where the short rows sort of stop in it. The second major type of heel is the heel flap and gusset. And this one is definitely more complicated. Um, people have very strong opinions about which heels they like and don't like for a lot of different reasons, but namely certain heel types fit different people's feet better. And so the heel flap and gusset is one of my favorite heel types. Um, and so the way that it works is you get down here you come down, you do your cuff, you do your tube. And then when you get here, you're just working on half of the needles and you go all the way down and you can see there's this like edge here you do a turn and then you pick up these stitches and go across there come down on the other side pick up and keep going and you have a lot more stitches right here and so you slowly decrease them and as you decrease them you end up back at your normal um, stitch count and you move on with the tube um, that one we're going to talk about again a little bit later, um, but the reason that it is so common is because it's easy to reinforce. If you slip stitches while you're working on that flap in the back, then it's a lot more difficult for th there to become a hole in your sock or something like that. And the third main type that I'm going to talk about is the afterthought or forethought heel. So this is an example of the afterthought heel. And the way that this one works is, let me get the other sock. You literally knit the tube without the heel. Okay, you can see that the heel just kind of pops up out of here. You knit the tube without the heel. And then if you're doing an afterthought heel, you go back, you find where you want to put the heel, you snip it and pick up all your stitches around and knit the heel almost like you're knitting another toe. And you can see that like the toe and the heel kind of match. Okay. There we go. Um, and then you close it off and that will give you a heel. It sort of pops out. Now, the, when we talk about afterthought versus forethought heel, a true afterthought heel, you knit the tube and then you go back, you find where you want the heel and you cut it. In a forethought heel, what you're going to do is um, knit your tube, let's say you're doing toe up, okay? You knit your tube up to here, and then you put in waist yarn, like extra yarn here, you knit a little bit there. And then you keep going with your tube, so that when you go back to the end, you don't have to cut it. You just pull out that waist yarn and pick up the stitches around the waist yarn. Um, so those are the three main types, afterthought, short row and heel flap and gusset. Um, I'm going to show you a couple more nuances to heel flap and gusset because it can get pretty interesting. So for instance, in this one, you can see that the patterning sort of followed into the heel flap. And as opposed to this one that I showed you at the beginning, where there are little vertical stripes, those are the slipped stitches. Okay, I'm having some camera issues today. So this one is a heel flap and gusset, but you can see the pattern continues down the heel flap and the gusset has some patterning in it too. And this one is a heel flap and gusset, but instead of having the gusset here, you have the gusset like in the middle of the sole and it comes out like that. And then you go up with your heel flap. Um, there are a lot of nuances to heel flap and gusset, a lot of different ways that you can design it. Same with short rows. So with short rows, you can do, um, so if we're looking at different short row techniques, this sock is just a basic short row. This one is a short row heel, but 
you can't see that line and that's because it went shorter and then I went bigger again and then shorter and then bigger again. You can almost see this sort of spiral. And that is a um, short row technique from a Knit Picks book. And then there's this one where you can see that the short row is very, very long. And that's because right at the edge of the heel, I increased here. This is top down. So I increased here so that I would have more stitches to make a longer heel. And then I decreased again right there to make it go back to fitting the foot. So this one gives a really roomy heel. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different, and there's also uh, Fish Lips Kiss which is a specific kind of heel. Um, I'm not gonna get too much into that because it's a paid for pattern. It's a dollar, uh, but it's worth it. If you like doing short row heels, I definitely advise uh, Fish Lips Kiss. It's a good technique for how to do uh, short row heels. People talk about all different types of short rows. So there's basically those three types of heels. Um, and Heel Flap and Gusset has all sorts of nuances. You can do the flap different ways. You can do the gusset different ways. But the basic idea is that you start with a flap, and then you pick up stitches along the edge and decrease again. And that's how you do your um, turn. Uh, there's short rows, and the basic idea is you go do 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 and that's how you do your turn. And then of course there's an afterthought or a forethought where you do it after the sock is done and you pick up your stitches and you knit your heel like you're knitting a toe. Which brings me to the reason that I haven't talked a lot about different types of afterthought and forethought heels. And the reason is because I'm gonna talk about them in toes. You can do an afterthought or forethought heel just like any toe that you like. So uh, without further ado, let's talk about some toes. So after you've finished your heel, you continue with your tube until you get to the toe. And there are basically two types of toes, wedge toes and circle toes. And really it's a question of how are you forming your toe, okay? So does your toe make, does your tube come up and then does it make a wedge? Or does your tube come up and then make like a, like end in the middle, like whoop, like that. So I'm gonna give you, I have a very specific Toe I like to do, I like to do wedge toes. I don't have a lot of examples of different toe types because I pretty much do the same one all the time. I do have a few examples though. So let's look at this one. Now this one is a short row heel with three sections, okay? And so here's the toe, this is a circle toe. And you can see as I came down, I started decreasing in multiple sections ending almost like a spiral in the middle, like that. Um, a lot of people find that that fits them very well. I do not, uh, in case you didn't notice, this is ripped. I have to mend it. I'm actually gonna take it right off this blocker um, so that I can do that. And then a wedge toe, you come down and you start the toe and your toe literally uh, decreases on the sides to form a wedge. And they're a lot easier to show off the sock blockers because the sides are where it decreases. So this is a wedge toe, okay? So this one, this is the circle toe, right? And it makes almost like a, like a circle or a spiral toe or center toe. There's a lot of different ways to call it. And this one is a wedge toe, makes a wedge. Now, you can change different types of toes, and, um, circle and wedge, basically by changing your rate and distribution of decreases. That's really all it is. So for instance, on this toe, I decreased every other row, one stitch before the end, then I had the end stitch, and then I would start the next needle and have one stitch, and then I did my decreases. Whereas, remember how I said that after Oh gosh, sorry. Remember how I said that afterthought heels were basically just toes? I'm gonna to give you an example that's an afterthought heel, because it's easier. In this one, I did a center decrease. Like I do in my blanket. So it made this like line going down the edge. 
um, you just decrease at different rates <laughs> and ratios and places. And that's basically how you make a toe. That's really it. You just decrease to where you want. Now, all of this has been assuming that you are doing a top down sock. So what you'll do is you'll start at the top, you'll knit tube, you'll make the heel, you'll knit tube, and you'll make your toe. You can also do bottom up. You can also do bottom up or toe up, which is where you start with the toe. You make some tube, you do a heel, you make some tube, and you do the cuff. Um, in which case, instead of decreasing, you would increase, right? You go up here. Now, short rows and afterthought heels are the easiest to do with toe up. You can do a heel flap and gusset, but it's a little bit more complicated. And then tube and then cuff, and then you just bind off up here instead of casting on. Um, lots of people have very strong opinions about whether or not they do bottom up or top down. Uh, I don't really, to be honest. Um, I like heel flap and gusset socks, so I tend to go top down because it's easier for me to remember how to do a heel flap and gusset. But I also follow the pattern and some of my favorite fitting socks are really wonky heel types, like these ones. So these are one of my favorite fitting socks and they're shorty socks and they're the ones that have the funny gusset in the middle and they were toe up um so yeah i don't really have a preference between the two a lot of people do but i i don't um that's the basic anatomy of a sock so when people talk about socks they're basically talking about a tube with three funky parts and really two of them are just basic river decreases or increases and then one funky part um, I'm going to take a minute and go through all of the socks that I have shown you because I am sure I'm going to get questions on which ones are which. So in the show notes, I will link to all the different socks. If you have questions about how I did them, I keep usually pretty in-depth project notes, um, but I'll just go ahead and name them here so you don't have to click through each one and see what each one is. I'm going to show you the socks in the order that I made them. So. This was only the second pair of socks I ever made. These are my Muche socks, which I made in May 2013. These ones are uncreatively labeled Randall's Socks Attempt 2 in Ravelry, and those are from November 2014. And these ones are my Field to Forest anklets, which are from June 2015. These are my Kindling Bells socks from November 2015. My Oktoberfest Socken socks, and I made these twice, one for me, one for my husband. And these ones are from January 2016. These ones were my qualifying socks for March Madness, or Sock Madness 2016. These were done in March 2016. These ones were round one from that same Sock Madness, which was also done in March 2016. And these are my Disco Dance socks, and I finished them in August of 2016. Okay, so these are my tonal socks. These were made for my husband in May 2017. These are my Sweet Grass socks that I finished in January 2018. These are were my 2017 Christmas socks, but of course I finished them in January of 2018. And these are my Stern Tallers, um, the knee highs, that I finished in February 2018. So it's pretty much all the socks that I uh, showed you guys. I did show you these ones, but I'll talk about them in my project discussion. So at that point, at this point, let's move on to project discussion. Okay, so the first pair of socks that I would like to show you, I genuinely don't know if I've made any progress since I showed them to you last, um, but they are living in this little baggie, which is from Dancing Sheep. It's got socks on it, and it contains a ladybug pin. So I don't remember the yarn that I'm knitting these on. It has been forever since I've worked on them. I'll put it in the down bar. 
But these were some Afterthought Heel socks that I was working on. True Afterthought Heel. Okay, just a tube. And I knit from the bottom up. So I started with the toes and increased, knit all the way up, and then I did some one by one ripping. And when you saw these last, I'm pretty sure I was literally right here. Okay, so I finished the ribbing. Big deal. Um, now, of course, I do have the other sock and I'm actually in the process of ripping out for the heels. So these are true afterthought heels. I did not leave waist yarn. So what I did is I picked up with my needles this row of stitches and then that row of stitches and I'm just cutting and removing that row in between. Um, so I'm going to make the heels out of the same yarn. These are going to be for my brother. Uh, the toe cuff, the toe and cuff I did on size one and a half DPNs, uh, which is a 2.5 millimeter. And the heel I'm also doing on that same 2.5 millimeter, except I'm using circulars. And the body of it I did on size two. And I did them on nine inch circulars and size two is a 2.75 millimeter. Um, yeah, so I just have to add the heels to these and then they will be ready to go uh, wrapped up for Christmas for my brother. Not sure when I'll get them done, but it'll be soon. Um, in here I have my extra yarn from that project. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna, I'd like to work on those and just get them done. Um, today is July 30th, by the way, I don't think I mentioned that. I'd like to get them done by the end of July, so I'm just gonna bang them out uh, tonight, basically. Um, all right, and then I'm gonna show you some socks that are frustrating to me. Very frustrating to me. So the first one, the less frustrating one, doesn't even have a bag because I'm not working on it. So these are my Campfire S'mores socks. Um, this is the Campfire S'mores self-striping colorway by Rock and String Yarn. I really love the yarn. I really do. I'm making them on Chigu 9 inch cirques, and these are going to be an afterthought heel. Here's the problem. They're really loose. I don't like the fabric at all. I'm The needles are way too big. I used to be a much tighter knitter, and I no longer am, and I'm just not happy with them. So, I like the toe, and be, again, I did the toe on a smaller needle size, which I often do for stockinette socks, uh, because it makes them more durable. So I'm gonna rip these out. <laughs> I started these, oh gosh, probably sometime in April. It was whenever I finished the body of those socks that I just showed you, because I wanted to have another body to work on. Maybe it was even earlier, maybe like March. I don't know. Um, I'm gonna rip them out. And I just got a set of nine inch cirques, which is what I use for afterthought heels because I just go in a circle most of the time. Um, any smaller needle size, so I'm gonna rip them out, do the toe in one size smaller than it is, which would be a US one, two point, two, two millimeters maybe. And then the body in the US one and a half, which is 2.5 millimeters. So yay. Um, yeah, I just have to do it. I just have to rip them out at some point. All right. So then uh, one more disaster of a project. <laughs> this is living in my Winnie the Pooh bag from Little Skein and the Big Wool. And I actually have some pins on this, a Tigger and an Eeyore that were from my grandmother. She gives me pewter Winnie the Pooh pins. So, yeah, I really like it. And you've seen these before. These are my shirt to gall socks. And I really like them. I really like the pattern. I really like working on them. Oh my God, I really like them. These are for my husband. Uh, the yarn is Knit Pick Stroll in the, it's not Razzleberry, is it? It might be Razzleberry. Electric blue colorway. So last time you saw them, <laughs> well, actually, I had come all the way down here and then ripped all the way back up. 
and you saw them pre-rip, so I was down here. So then I ripped, oh wait, no. I don't remember. Whatever. The point is, one of these is where you saw them last, and one of them is where I started with it on vacation. But I had to rip all the way back here and then all the way back down. So if this is where you saw it last, which it might be, I ripped all the way up and then all the way back down and put it back in. I have to rip them again. <sighs> so if you can see in this pattern, I've got like four split and then some here and split, split, split. Uh-oh, what's this? It's double length. I did two of these in a row instead of like alternating like you're supposed to. Because I was like, I memorized the pattern. I don't have to follow the pattern anymore. It's fine. Oh my God. And it bothers me so much. It really does. And it's like right after I pick up from the gusset here. It's like right there. So if I rip back, I have to rip back all the way to where I started the gusset. But I feel like I have to rip back. I feel like I can't just live with these. Maybe I should, but I don't know that I want to. We'll see. This will be the second time I've ripped back. The first time I ripped back and redid the heel flap because it was too short. Uh, yeah. But I really like these. I am working them on US one and a halfs, which are 2.5 millimeters, I believe. Yeah, 2.5 millimeters. That's what I'm working those on. Right now they're on waist yarn because I was on vacation and I wanted to reclaim the needles. <laughs> but yeah, so that's those. I'm not super happy about the fact that that thing's in the middle. Otherwise, I'm really loving making those socks. Um, I have two more works in progress and then a finished object. So I will show you this one. This is living in one of my manicori bags. I'm just gonna put this down. With little seagulls on it, which I love. And it has an I feel like knit pin. And inside of this, I am working on a pair of socks, which are the Whiskey and Rye socks. That's what they look like. And in case you didn't look at that and go, oh wait, I think I've seen that before. You did. It's because this is one of the socks that I showed you. So these are my Whiskey and Rye socks. I am working them on US size one needles. Um, and U.S. size 1, for those of you that are not in the U.S., is a 2.25 millimeter. Um, and yeah, I really enjoy these. So this is with Earl Grey Fiber Company yarn in her limited time Escabutz colorway, which was specially dyed up for my knitting or my D&D group. Uh, just a bunch of us friends and she's in that group. So yeah, I'm... I'm really happy with how they're coming out. Um, if you watched two podcasts ago when I was on vacation, I was talking about how I had brought this yarn with me to cast on another complicated sock after these ones were finished. And basically when I realized what had happened, I went, nope, these need to be in timeout and I'm gonna cast on the Escobuts. So that's what I did. So I used a tubular cast on, but I did twisted tubular and it did not work. It did not work at all. It's way too tight. So I'm actually going to have to redo this cast on. I'm not a hundred percent sure how I might just cut it off and pick up the stitches and do Judy is surprisingly stretchy by enough, but I don't want to, I want it to be pretty. I might re knit like half of the cuff and then Kitchener. I don't know. I'll figure it out, but it's too tight. And so I started the second one and I did the same cast on, but I didn't do it twisted at the top. So it doesn't look quite as pretty, but it's a lot stretchier. Um, yeah. So because these are on the simpler side and I can do them while I'm having a conversation and stuff, I'm actually saving these to work on during D and D 
my friends. You may or may not see these for quite a while because I'm only going to be working on them for three or four hours a month. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how they're coming out. And I won't need them until December anyway. Alright, I'm going to pause and start a new segment because my camera started glitching. So my next work in progress is living in my lone large studios on the go bag with the apple pin. There we go. And those are my Do You Yep socks. So you can see they're blueberry waffle. Um, that's the pattern that I chose to do. And I chose to make the heel flap follow the blueberry waffle pattern. So instead of doing every other, for those of you that know how heel flaps work, instead of doing every other stitch as a slip stitch, I did the two stitches that came from the knit column as a slip stitch. If you're not familiar with the blueberry waffle pattern, it's on Ravelry, it's free. Um, it's a very basic pattern. Now it's of course written for DK weight yarn, but it's really just whatever stitch count you use, just do that. Um, so I'm really happy with these. This one fits really well. Uh, the yarn is Knox Yarn, Knox Fiber Company, Knox Yarn, I don't remember. Um, and it's on her Diana, I believe, base, which includes cashmere, and I will put the base itself in the bottom, but I think it's an 801010 uh, merino, MCN, merino nylon cashmere. So I'm on the second sock, and I'm working on closing off the gusset. And this is also a limited edition colorway. Uh, this is the Do You Yep colorway, and that's from my friend Chase uh, when she got married, and she owns my local yarn store. Uh, and I was in her bridal party, and she gave a skein of the yarn to everyone in the bridal party. Um, and those were their vows. Do you? Yep. Do you? Yep. I now pronounce you married. And it was lovely. It was so them. Um, so these are sort of like an on-the-go project, a little bit different than my stockinette ones because these ones quite frankly, are a little bit more complicated. The stockinette I tend to do in the dark where I don't have to look. Um, yeah, so that's my last finished object. Yeah, and so now I have one work in progress, I believe. Yeah, so I'll show you that next. So that's it for works in progress, and I have one pair of finished object socks. So here are my finished object socks. These are my wibbly waffly socks uh, that I knit for my husband another blueberry waffle pattern. I did another heel flap and gusset, although this one I just did normally. Um, yeah, it's a 64 stitch sock, wedge toe, two by two cuff, which is always the way to go with a uh, um, blueberry waffle. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really happy with it. Um, this is a stitch marker for where I was when I started vacation. And here it is on the other side. This is where I was when I last showed it to you on that vacation podcast. And uh, yeah, these were my sort of simple socks while I was there. And I finished them. So I cast on my do you socks that you just saw. Uh, so I blocked these. These were pretty tight on my husband. And uh, by the time I figured out that the heel flap was too short, I had finished the first sock and was all the way down here on the second sock. And so I was kind of like, you know, I don't care that much. <laughs> They're a little bit tight, but they still fit him. So I just blocked them. Um, and I'm pretty sure they fit better, but I'm not going to test it because they are going to be a gift. I don't know if he knows that they're finished. So uh, now that I've shown them to you, I'll wrap them up and put them in my Christmas box of ongoing gift collection. Um, yeah. So those are all of my sock projects that I have to show you. Um, and that's all I want to talk about today. I hope that you enjoy. Thanks for stopping by and have a wonderful crafty life. Bye.